Welcome, welcome, everyone. Hello, hello. Happy Thursday. We're going to give everyone a few more minutes before we get started. Hi, Robin. Hi, Mark. Look at y'all using the chat feature already. It's like, you know. I'm gonna give it another minute. I know a bunch of folks like to log in just a couple minutes past seven. And with this being a shorter night, I wanna make sure that we get as many folks in the door before we get started. <laughs> I'm always in my office. I've just decorated as such that I like to show it off now. Before it was just an empty wall and now it's pretty. So now I like to show you guys. Though the virtual backgrounds are cool too. Thanks, Mark. I think it looks nice too. Those are all photos taken um while working for extension so out on people's properties all of them except for the sand dial that i found on the beach but all right we're gonna go ahead and get started welcome tonight is part eight and part nine of our gardening with florida friendly principles a collaboration between uh florida friendly landscaping and community gardens i'm gonna apologize right now i am getting over a cold not COVID, but I'm gonna try not to start coughing and I am popping cough drops just so that I can make sure that I can make it through this talk. So I apologize if I am uh, have marbles in my mouth, not an actual marble. And I'm gonna to try to make this <laughs> as painless for you guys as possible. And that's one of the reasons why my vo voice is scratchier than normal as well. So we're gonna go ahead and dive right in. So, my name is Katie Harper. I am one of our Florida Friendly Landscaping Program coordinators. I am based in Dade City. I work primarily with HOAs on Florida Friendly Landscaping as well as healthy ponds, um, that is stormwater ponds, as well as um, being a certified arborist. And so if you have tree questions, landscape questions, FFL questions, anything at all, I am your girl. So you, you, uh, use my contact information there and I can work with you or your HOA or anybody on anything on any of those topics. And then I'm also here with Mr. Kyle Christmas, my colleague from Community Gardens, and I will let him introduce himself and his program. Hello, welcome everyone again. Thanks so much for uh, showing up tonight. Um, like Katie said, my name is Kyle Christmas. I run the Community Gardens program for the east side of the county. Um, I think all of you guys know that by now. You've been here a few times. It's my job to go out into the community and uh, set up gardens, get folks involved with gardenings that are either in our community gardens or get them involved with gardening at home. But I teach people about gardening. Thanks, Katie. And it's uh, been an awesome series with you. All right. So, so far we've talked about right plant, right place. We've talked about watering efficiently fertilizing appropriately. We've talked about the importance of mulch. We've talked about how to attract and or manage wildlife, depending on if it's wanted or unwanted. And last week we touched on recycling yard waste. Tonight we are gonna to touch on the last two FFL principles, reducing stormwater runoff, as well as protecting the waterfront. Now, as you all know, I always love to do introductions. Let us know where you're from. And besides watering, do you all really think about water and water in any other capacity while, you know, gardening, landscaping, anything like that? I just want to know if it crosses your mind. And if so, in what capacity?
we're looking for where you're from or where you're calling in from tonight, as well as, you know, do you think about water besides, you know, simply watering your garden? Robin says Zephyr Hills, and she thinks about getting rain barrels every day. We have Mark in Wesley Chapel, who is thinking about the lack of water in his garden. And we have Kathleen in Newport Ritchie, and she's concerned about the runoff pollution waterways. Awesome. Well, this is gonna be a great topic, and we have some other discussions coming up later this summer that'll tie into some of those talks as well. So reducing stormwater runoff. Why is this important? There are so many inputs that are being contributed to stormwater runoff. It's called non-point pollution, where you can't point a finger at a single spot of where it's coming from. It's not coming from a chemical plant or a car dealership or anything like that. It's coming from multiple smaller sources and compounding the issue into something that's huge. And so that is one of the reasons why we are concerned about reducing our stormwater runoff is all of these things, you know, it could be pet waste, it could be pollutants on the waterway, excess fertilizer, it is, you know, the excess nutrient nitrogen from your drain field, part of your septic system. All of those things when combined with excess stormwater runoff gets washed into our stormwater system. And it the process of having all of that filtered before it hits the aquifer is going to take a much longer path as opposed to if we keep those inputs in that water in our landscape where it's allowed to percolate down through those layers of the soil before it gets to the aquifer, aquifer before it gets to our, uh, our rivers and out to the bays, then we're able to do a whole lot immediately and not wait for our stormwater systems, which may or may not be functioning properly to do a job. Now in Florida, the image on the left is from 1900 and the image on the right is from 1992. Now this is an image that was developed from NASA. And so the dark green, the greens are forested areas, the blues are wetland areas, and then the grays and the yellows are actually impermeable. Well, the yellows are uh, agriculture and then the grays and the blacks are actually imper impervious surfaces. And so what we're seeing here is that there is going to be a lot more inputs from agriculture and the amount of impervious surfaces has increased exponentially as well. And so that what that means is that our water is unable to percolate down into the soil and is in turn washing down our sidewalks, our streets, our driveways, et cetera, off of buildings, um, anything that doesn't allow water to go through it. Now, er as we increase urbanization in Florida, we have roughly a thousand people moving to our state every single day. That's a lot of people. Or maybe it's even our county. I don't know. It's a lot of people. I forget if it's a, if it's the county or if it's the state. I'm pretty sure it's the state. Uh, it's a lot of folks. It's a lot of families. Each of those families is going to need a home. Each of those homes has a driveway, a sidewalk. All of those people need to have a place to work. All of those places need to have parking lots. All of those families need to have a place to go grocery shopping, to get their, get their food, have their doctor's offices, places to shop. All of those contribute to places that more than likely are sitting on impervious services. And so our water is not able to be filtered the way that it was naturally designed. And so, as I mentioned before, water filtering down through the different soil profiles as it gets down to the aquifer, that is how we've had water purified for millions of years. But as we add these layers where water can't get down through there and it washes into our stormwater ponds and may or may not you know, be functioning the way it was designed if it's been cared for or not cared for over the past 35 years, especially in flood conditions, you, know, you just have that water washed through those ponds. And so that actually results in excess nutrients getting and pollutants getting into our, our rivers and out into the bay where it is not able to be controlled. So small changes really do make a big difference, especially as you're able to do it in, in a way that 
is attractive as well as effective. And it all starts with one person deciding to make change. So in our gardens, we're able to do a few things. And when we do them well, our neighbors and our friends and our families also see that difference and they're inspired to make that change as well. So rain spouts, one of the simplest things that we advocate in FFL is rain barrels, as well as pointing your, your uh, rain spouts away from impervious surfaces and into your landscape beds. Now, one thing that I do want to say, especially as this is a edible garden discussion class, is that please do not use the water from your rain barrels on your edible gardens. And we say this because of the chemicals and the, the products used in roofing materials. So all of that gets collected in that water and then it also sits there in that water in that tub and we don't recommend putting those things on your food. So please, if you're using rain barrels, keep that isolated to your, your flowers or in your landscapes. Um, your beds, et cetera, just don't put it on your edible products. But your, your rain gutters, point those, into your, point those into your flower beds. It's free irrigation. You don't need to worry about it and it keeps it from running down your driveway, catching uh, all of that excess uh, pollutants, whether it's motor oil or excess fertilizer, even you know oak leaves and bay tree leaves and all those other organic components that can add to excess nitrogen in our in our stormwater systems. So point those those rain spouts into the drain, get yourself a rain barrel. We may or may not have more of those classes coming up later this year, and I'll have the link to those here at the end of the class. Now swales. A swale is a long shallow depression in the ground that is designed to collect or redirect water. Now these are often seen as rain gardens. They're often used as ways to irrigate gardens that do not have irrigation systems. And they are a great way to redirect your rainwater runoff or the water collecting in your yard or anything like that back into your edible garden. So you guys actually, the photo on the right is actually a garden and they have dug these swales to go in and actually fertile I keep saying fertilize, irrigate, irrigate their edible garden. And it's just a way to naturally redirect that water in a way that keeps it off the streets. And again, those impervious surfaces. There's a bunch of ways to do that. I have a link in the references. That is a really great um, reference for swales. Everybody's property is going to be different. So I did not want to do anything on how to how to dig or anything like that simply because it is going to depend on the um, the geography of your specific property and the way the water flows as well as your goals but i do highly recommend that you all look into swales as a way to redirect our rainwater especially as we're moving into storm season next is permeable surfaces also known as porous or pervious surfaces now, these surfaces allow water to percolate into the soil and, as I've been talking about, filter out pollutants and recharge the water table, get down into that water aquifer and fill it back up. Now, water here in the Tampa area is one of our most valuable resources, and it is in the shortest supply, especially as we continue to grow our population. So by having these pervious surfaces, these permeable surfaces, it could be something as simple as grass or pavers without grout between them pebbles, and then there are more high-tech surfaces that are almost like pavements that actually allow water to filter down through it. And those surfaces actually only work down here in the south. You cannot have those surfaces up north because of the freeze-thaw cycle. And if you get uh, moisture into them, they will, and uh, freeze, they will expand and crack. But down here, they are a great option. And again, it really does depend on your aesthetic and your goals for your garden. There are numerous options for permeable surfaces or pervious uh, walkways. And so I highly recommend that you all look into those. And uh, it's like I said, it could be as simple as skipping the grout when you're laying brick uh, and, and things like that. But allowing your 
the water to get down into that soil off of that surface and not creating, you know, a mini river every time it rains down your sidewalk or down the pathway that you have, uh, that you have there in the, um, in your backyard. So again, permeable surfaces. So for those of you I saw that we just had uh, two folks jump in, we just talked about rain spouts. Please make sure that you're pointing your rain spouts into your landscape beds or away from any per, uh, impervious surfaces. So any of your hard surfaces like driveways, sidewalks, et cetera. And rain barrels are great. They're a great way to capture a natural resource, but please do not use those in your edible gardens as they do contain trace elements of the chemicals used in roofing materials. So they're great. Rain barrels are great for irrigating and watering your landscape, uh, your landscape plants and any ornamental flowers, but please do not use it on edible, uh, edible plants. And then we also talked about swales, which are um, a way to naturally irrigate where you you dig a slight trench as a way to naturally guide water to a place where you want it. I recommend you all look into this and figure out what, what may work best for your properties. And then we did just talk about permeable surfaces, a way to still have a walkway, but that allows water to infiltrate it and percolate down into the water table while also allowing those inputs to filter out of that water before it gets there. Now, protecting the waterfront. This is huge because everything is connected. All of the ponds that you see in this photo are connected. Whether you can see it from with your naked eye from this map or not, they are all connected through various swales, uh, underground uh, pipes, et cetera. This is a system, they are all connected. And that is one of the reasons why I wanted to touch on protecting the waterfront, even as we are talking about gardens because you are all part of a mini watershed that essentially drains into a stormwater pond. So even if you are not living on a pond or living on the water, you are making an impact on, on our stormwater system as well as the water going into our aquifer or into the bay. Now, for those of you who do live on, um, on a lake, on a pond, near the water, et cetera, this is one of the key things that we are teaching in our stormwater classes right now is respecting the buffer zone. Now, the buffer zone is a 10-foot zone from the top of bank, top of your high water line. <laughs> Excuse me. So it's the, from the start of your high water line, uh, 10 feet in as well as we, and we also like to include the slope in this, but that is not part of the 10 feet. Um, and what that means is that that is a, a zone where you do not mow, you do not fertilize, you do not use any products like insecticides or herbicides. It is where you install plants that are Florida friendly, that are designated for that space, for that, that moisture content and that slope and that purpose, and you let them be because right now we see excess turf going up to the edge of ponds, or we see folks with other landscape plants that are not suitable for water or being that having their feet that wet and they aren't doing as well in that result in you know, folks applying more, whether it's more water, more fertilizer, ripping out plants. And so that actually causes more erosion. And it's just this, never ending cycle. And so we really advocate for respecting that buffer zone that allows for that pond to have its own ecosystem and to go through all of those motions. Give me one second, y'all. Now, as I mentioned, right place, right, right, plant right place is going to be key. If you are aiming on doing something edible, we recommend doing something that is, as I mentioned, Florida friendly. What I'm showing here is elderberry, and this is a really great option for right along that buffer zone because it doesn't need fertilizer, it doesn't need irrigation, 
you can just let it do its thing and it will provide food for wildlife. It provides shade for the, for the, the waterfront. And so make sure that you're doing your research, um, but please respect that buffer zone. Now, overall, Florida friendly landscaping is all about protecting our waterfront and protecting our water resources. And as cliche as it is, these are things that we can do to protect the waterfront. So right plant, right place. Everything comes back to right plant, right place, right care, right time. Making sure that we are putting the right plant in the right place guarantees that you give your plant a fighting shot as well as you get to use less time, money, inputs, all of the things. And in turn, that means that we are using less of our water resources. We are having less nitrogen and phosphorus leaching into our water systems. It means that you have, uh, you're keeping your organic matter on your property. You're recycling things as you are cutting your grass or pulling out plants from your garden, things like that. And so all of this just combines together and it all, it's, it compounds on itself, but it does start with the right plant in the right place because without that, none of these other things are going to matter. And ultimately, all of these things help us protect our water here in Florida, which as I mentioned, is the main purpose of Florida friendly landscaping. As, as deceiving as the title is, FFL is all about uh, protecting our water and helping you all have safe, healthy landscapes and gardens that use less inputs that could ultimately impact our water usage. And so that is our series. That is our Florida friendly gardening, uh, gardening with Florida friendly principles. We've touched on all nine of our FFL principles. And so Kyle and I want to thank you all for joining us to not only tonight, but for the past eight weeks, as we've dove into all of these in a way that applies to edible gardens. Now, these are the resources for tonight, not nearly as many. This topic wasn't nearly as, as crazy as some of the other ones that we discussed. Now, there are some other things coming up this summer that we wanted to make sure that we could highlight for you all. So Kyle, I'll go ahead and let you talk about this one. Thanks, Katie. Uh, so uh, folks, this summer, uh, the Community Gardens Program is putting on a summer camp uh, for kids ages 8 to 12. It's going to be uh, the week of June 14th, uh, and it'll go all five days. Uh, and. Uh, it will be over here in Dade City where our office is located uh, at the One Stop Shop. Um, and we're going to be learning about all sorts of different types of uh, veggie gardening, fruit gardening. Uh, we're gonna learn about beneficial insects. We're gonna learn how to attract insects. Um, you know, a lot of the stuff that we just learned uh, throughout this series we'll be covering here in the garden, but on a more uh, educational basis, hands-on uh, really working with kids. So if anybody is interested in signing up, uh, please feel free to reach out to me and I can get you the link on how to sign up for this. Again, this is a uh, summer camp. It's a week long. It's from it's for kids ages 8 to 12. Thanks, Kyle. Thank you, Katie. All right, next we have the Tampa Bay Community Waterwise Awards. And this is a tri-county uh, award program. We award uh, landscapes, both for residential and non-residential properties in Pasco, Hillsboro, and Pinellas. And this award focuses on landscapes that are maintained with minimal water usage while utilizing FFL and sustainable landscaping practices. You do not have to have an outstanding landscape to apply. In fact, I feel as though one of the best benefits of applying for this is that you get two FFL uh, coordinators, as well as uh, one or more master gardeners on your property to walk it with you, inspect your irrigation system. We also give you feedback on your landscape. And I think personally that that is the biggest 
benefit of applying for this program. And so highly recommend if any of you all are interested in landscaping or um, ornamentals, anything like that, or even ways that you can sustain your landscape on less water, um, I highly recommend that you all apply. The, the award is actually a very beautiful stepping stone. It's like a stained glass stepping stone. Um, you can see one of the one was right here. And actually this one right here is an example from this year. And so there's the link for you there. It's awards.tampabaywaterwise.org backslash enter dash your dash landscape. And so please, I would love to see some of your names in the entry pool next year. Next we have, I wanted to highlight the Pasco County camps and classes. Many of you already have experience getting onto the Pasco County Eventbrite page because you're here. So that tells me that you found us somehow, some way, and you got registered through Eventbrite for this course. But keep an eye out. We have plenty of classes coming for you uh, through the summer that are going to be coming up on the schedule in the next week or two. So keep an eye out for those. Some of those will include, you know, Tampa Bay Waterwise, why you should enter, how to hire an arborist, hurricane preparation, pruning 101, HOA reserves, what you need to consider, FFL for HOAs, tree management plans for HOAs, Tri-County Healthy Pond class that will be happening in August. And then um, do any of you all have topics that you would like to know more about? Do any of you have topics that you would like to see us emphasize in a future class? Please put them in the chat. We can't teach unless we know what you guys want to know about. Think on it. I'm going to go on to the next slide because we do have more to share with you in terms of what's coming from PASCO. But please, in the chat, please drop any anything you guys want to know more about, whether it's, you know, mulch or citrus or, you know, anything, um, anything that you all really want to know about. We can always dive into plant selection. We can dive into, um, we can get down to as nitty gritty as you guys want, or we can stay very uh, broad scope as well. Robin, Florida friendly plants, we can do that. And I can also be sure to emphasize our Florida Friendly Landscaping Guide to Plant Selection and Landscape Design. Now this is one of my most favorite resources and it has some amazing content. And so this is what I always highlight whenever we talk about Florida Friendly Plants. And so I can definitely do another session on FFL. Now for those of you tuning in with us, I figured I might as well, um, uh, Robin, you can find that through Swift Mud, Southwest Florida District. Hold on, I'm going to type it in the chat for you. Florida Friendly Landscaping Guide to Give me one second. There you go. Um, you can get it as a PDF on the Swift Mud website, or you can request a hard copy for free. I believe it's free. You may have to pay shipping, um, but it is a free resource through Swift Mud. Um, for those of you tuning in with us, is this? an okay time for you all? Is there um, a day or time that works best for you? I figured I might as well ask you guys while we have you here uh, just to make sure that we can make we can see you guys again. So are Thursday evenings an okay time for you? Is there a better time during the day or mornings, afternoons, lunchtime? Is there, is there a better time for you uh, for us to meet?
thank you guys so much for your feedback and for that very quick response. Now, one last thing I did want to share with you guys in case you have kids or you know folks who have kids is we have a whole bunch of 4-H summer camps coming up. And so the, these range from classes for, I think we have five to eight in here. We have eight to 13, eight to 14 years old, everything from fishing camp, wildlife day, little scientists. We have nature explorer day camp, which I'm actually helping with as well as the wildlife day, engineering, arts and crafts. There are tons of 4-H summer camps this year. So please take a look at these, screenshot this, share this with your friends and family. And so this is open to residents of Pasco County. So 4-H camps are limited to Pasco County kids. But again, if you have friends, family, neighbors whose children may be interested, they do not need to be a member of 4-H to participate, but we're always looking to spread the message and make sure that as many folks know about these programs as possible. I know they're gonna be a blast and these will actually, a lot of these will be held here at my office here in Dade City or at with Lacucci or at, uh, or at the Starkey Wilderness Preserve over in Newport Ritchie. And there's a few of them held at my office over here at the One Stop Shop. Mm -hmm. Ready, set, grow. And um, I think I saw another one or two on there. The well, cooking ones over here too, whatever the one that one is. <laughs> so uh, super stoked. And I'm really excited to help out with these programs. And so hopefully uh, we'll have full sessions. And again, the link is at the bottom. I recommend screenshotting this just so that way you can get it. I tried to find a shorter link for the 4-H camps, but this was as short as I could get it. Now, do you all have any questions for Kyle or I on anything? Any of the subjects that we've gone over. Is there anything that you guys went back and watched something and it didn't quite make sense or something related to starting a community garden or your landscape or anything at all? While you guys have us here, this is going to be this is our last time together as, you know, gardening with MFL. So, oh, I'm getting sentimental. I'm going to miss you guys. Darla, yeah, I'll send you the link after we're done. So I will send out the um, the link to the playlist on YouTube for all of the recordings. And so one link will get you to all eight videos. And so I will send that out to everybody who registered for the course. So my goal is to have the rest of the videos, including this one, up by tomorrow. So expect to have the link out um, end of day tomorrow, beginning of next week. Thanks, I love it. Hey, if you guys wouldn't mind, uh, drop in the chat, what uh, was your favorite topic that we covered over this uh, eight week uh, period? Yeah, let me know, let me know what's been your favorite. Let us know what you liked, you know? We, uh, we love to see that kind of feedback. Attracting wildlife for Mark, awesome. Brian, that's great to hear, hard to choose. I'm so glad you got something out of every discussion. That's my goal is that every time you guys go away with at least one bit of new information that you didn't know as you came into this, so. I'm really glad that we were able to achieve that. Kathleen, Kathleen said fertilizing. fertilizing. That was a good one. And we can always dive much deeper into fertilizing and 
um, attracting wildlife. We just glossed over all, we just, we just scratched the surface on these as we were trying to dive into gardening specifically with these principles. So there is always much more science and much more things that we can dive into specifically with all of these. So as you guys have questions about these, as you're implementing the things that you've learned, please don't uh, hesitate to reach out to Kyle or I. We are now a resource in your toolbox. And so please uh, do not hesitate to reach out to us in the future. If we don't know the answers, we know someone who does. And we look forward to working with you all here as we move forward. Robin, that's great that you want to start a community garden. Please feel free to reach out to me whenever you want to get started on that. Brian, if you have specific topics or things that you'd like to know about, please don't hesitate to shoot me an email and I may be able to schedule a specific talk uh, that dives a little bit more in depth. Or I can always send you fact sheets. Again, thank you everyone for participating in this. Uh, you know, we really enjoy what we do and uh, we're glad you guys were able to spend the Thursday nights with us the last eight weeks. And, uh, you know, we look forward to seeing you in future classes as well. All right, guys, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday evening. Have a wonderful rest of your week, a great weekend, and have a safe and wonderful Memorial Day weekend next week. I hope you all have a wonderful holiday, no matter how premature this is. Have a great holiday and a great rest of your night, y'all. Thank you so much for joining us.